know, sometimes I forget where that music came from, that it's not specifically student of the gun. It's not titled student of the gun theme song. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> it should be. It should be called student of the gun theme song. Now it's from Madison rising. And actually it's an instrumental track from their, uh, uh, song, right to bear. Is that correct? Jared? Yes. And normally when you would hear that, you would hear it with lyrics and they pulled the, they pulled the, the, um, singing out of it and they just give us the instrumental so we could use that as our intro and our outro music i know it makes you happy and then it makes you sad at the same time welcome back to a new century of student of the gun radio we're episode 301 now that's right coming to you from the silencer shop studios home of the glass case of emotion silencershop.com the easiest way to buy silencers online. Period. There, period. Full stop. That's right. All right. So it is as you're as we're posting this. This went up zero dark thirty on December twenty fourth, twenty fifteen, which means that would be what Christmas. Christmas Eve. That's right. Now you may be listening to it later, but uh, just so you know, it may it went live. It went up available on Christmas Eve, and today's topic is going to be your Christmas gift to America. Okay. Well, no, isn't America supposed to give me stuff? You, speaking of gifts, you know what I didn't realize? I was going through the silencer shop site, and I didn't realize that uh, when you purchase a silencer from silencershop.com, you actually don't have to pay transfer fees or shipping. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't know it's that. It's built into the cost. It's built in, yeah. They just uh-huh. they sh- ship it to your local dealer, and you go pick it up. You don't have to pay any fees when you get there. It's interesting. I didn't know that. Very cool. Very cool. That's like a little gift. It's a little gift to you, you little kids out there. Hey, uh, thank you to everybody who uh, reviewed the Honey Badger book so far. We had a a bunch this week. People jumped in. They went to Amazon.com and left their reviews of the book. Thank you very much. Can Uh, I make one more request? You can. It has to do with Honey Badger book. Okay. I actually put it up on our studentofthegungear.com store. If you left a review on Amazon or if you have the book and you haven't left a review yet, please go to studentofthegungear.com and leave a review for it there as well. That That is where I go to look at stuff. So uh, I like to read what you guys have to say. Okay. Well, there you go. No, we, 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 uh, we do thank you guys, uh, everybody out there in the audience who purchased the book and continues to purchase it and what have you, whether it's the Kindle version or the paperback or the exclusive limited edition signed version that's right there's a limited number of signed copies for you guys but uh, let's not let's well let's, let's move right into it we got a lot to talk about today and and it's a you know it, it's funny because now that we're at 301 and we did just i hope you guys enjoyed yesterday's show uh, and thank you to everyone who helped us uh, make yeah. yesterday's show a memorable uh, event a memorable occasion i kind of feel like like we're starting over on January 1st. Yeah, you know, no, it doesn't it feel like, like that. It. It's like, oh, it's brand new. Well, well, we might as well just take two weeks off then. Yeah, that's what we do. We just take two weeks off and come back on the 2nd of January. Let's do it. That'd be awesome. <laughs> You're causing panic in the <laughs> in the student of the gun listener world right now. They're like, you're already not doing long enough shows, and now you're going to take time off? What am I going to do? Uh, I don't know. You can thank Duracoat because... Life is too short to have an ugly gun. There you go. I wonder if anybody did a Christmas-themed Duracoat gun, like red and green. Well, you could, but then it would only be good like a month out of the year. You know, you could do like an elf gun or something. Well, yeah, like but that. I mean you should have a gun for every month anyway. <laughs> well, there you go. Crossbreed holsters. All, all of my guns are in memory of Black History Month. Oh, really? Yeah, because they're, they're all black. They're all black. Yeah. Why do they got to be black, man? Well, that's just the way they came. You have that one, what do we call it? What are we calling it? The stealth shadow, the shadow. It's like that dark battleship gray. Your AK. Speaking of which, you don't have a picture of you hugging your AK. And I know. That's just wrong. That's no. wrong. I will get one tonight. We need, to, we need to put one in front of the tree, you next to the tree, hugging your AK. Okay. That's what we need to do. Any hooser. Crossbreed Holsters, the makers of the Bruce Jenner Commemorative, also known as the Super Tuck, and the Freedom Carry. Check them out at crossbreedholster.com. Which have nothing to do with each other. No. Freedom is free. No. Freedom is some, is what, Jared? Freedom the is of, the result of the right choice. Yeah. Making the right choice. 
Brownells at Brownells.com. You can get Frog Lube at Brownells, Jericho at Brownells. Check them out. And uh, Velocity Triggers. I'm, I'm just going to knock all these out because i got a lot of stuff to talk about today. Velocity Triggers, superior quality and value. Got a black rifle. They got one for you. Don't forget uh, SWATFuelStore.com, and you can use the prepared code, prepared promo code. If you use that, you're going to save 15% off your total order. So go to SWATFuelStore.com and save yourself some cash. And lastly but not leastly, Century Arms, the sweetest smelling arms maker in America. There you go. Uh, we got a very cool go team moment. Now, my friend Masad Ayub, and if you're a grad program member, you heard the Masad Ayub interview. If you're not a grad program member and you become one, you will hear it. That's right. You will hear it because everybody who joins the grad program, uh, they get ex- they get exclusive grad program access to all the celebrity interviews. Mas Ayub, Ken, Ak- Ken Hackathorn, Dave Spaulding. Uh, James Yeager, Bill Wilson. James Yeager, Bill Wilson. Who else? Uh, did Dave Bray from Madison Rising, Dave obviously. Dave Bray from Madison Rising. So, yeah, you, you want to yeah. participate in that for sure. So, uh, the, anyway, the reason I brought up Moss is because probably 20-plus years ago, he coined a term in print, and then he used it in his classes called uh, what he called a critical error in the victim selection process. And the people that are uh, featured in this upcoming story – they did that exact thing. The bad guys committed a critical error in the victim selection process, and uh, they paid for it. Uh, well, they received some lead as payment. So, hit it, maestro. That's why I say A good shot, man. Thank you, Filter, for our go team moment. Nice shot. And this comes to us from concealednation.org. Houston concealed carriers unload on armed muggers. Why we travel in packs. <laughs> By James England, 12 21, 2015. All right. Let's spread some good news here. Now, the original report came from KHOU Houston. Houston, Texas, three robbery suspects, two of them which were believed armed, suffered a terrible surprise when they attempted to ambush two men and two women exiting a bar at 2 a.m. According to statements released by the victims and the Houston police through KHOU, two armed robbers approached the group as they were getting into their car. The first one told the driver to give him his money. But the driver held up his photo ID and credit card because he reportedly doesn't carry cash. Okay, I got that. I don't carry cash. Well, um, what happened was the first armed robber slapped his belongings out of his hand. That's when the victim's brother got out of the car and judiciously placed two well-aimed shots into the man's chest. He then immediately transitioned to the second armed robber and reportedly, this is from the report, it said, emptied a, his 12-round clip. <laughs> I'm sure that was from KHOU. Uh, he, it says, uh, the quote from KHOU story says, emptied the rest of the clip. We have a 12-round clip, so emptied the rest of the clip into the guy, the brother said. Well, it may have been a quote. Maybe the brother likes clips. I don't know. Uh, well, it turns out the cop said that he turned up at the hospital He got hit like seven times. (laughs) That the second robber managed to flee the scene after allegedly stealing the gun out of one of the women's purses. Uh, All right, the paragraph is that the second robber managed to flee the scene after stealing a gun out of one of the women's purses. Period. He showed up to the hospital with seven bullet wounds. The first suspect went down and was placed in critical condition. What women are they talking about? Uh, I, I guess the girlfriends are. I don't know what the heck's oh. going on here. This reporter, it's kind of a, this reporter job sucks. Yeah. But you know what's cool what, or what's that? funny or interesting is that the robbers asked for money, but they got something that's more valuable than money. That's right. Bullets. Precious metal. Yes. They got precious metal instead. So, well, what, what's our, our learning curve here? Well, th- our learning curve from Houston is, A, uh, pay attention to what's going on around you. You never know when you're going to become the designated shooter. Uh, B, 
handgun bullets don't make people fly through the air and, you know, burst into flames, regardless of, well, if he'd been, yeah, he obviously wasn't using a forty-five because if he would have, that guy would have, you know. No, no, he, he didn't. He would have flew backwards 2,000 feet. Yeah, he would have flown backwards, exploded. burst into flame. Yeah. But uh, if you shoot people with handguns, now where should you shoot people with handguns, Jerry? Thoracic triangle. Yeah, the thoracic triangle. Uh, what I want you guys to do is pledge allegiance, okay? You know, you take your right hand, you put it over pledge your allegiance heart, the flag and then you the United, shift you it. You stop now? Yeah, you can okay. shift. So you shift your hand from over your left chest to the center, spread your fingers out. That is where you want to put bullets. Make, make that make, I'm no. person shut up, please. I'm trying to, she's like trying to tell you that she doesn't understand what you're saying, and I don't really care what she has to yeah, say, yeah. so. I'm sorry about that. Um, but anyway, so you say, well, where should I put the bullets, Paul? Well, if you have the opportunity, and if you practice, pledge allegiance, slide your hand over, spread your fingers out, and that area from basically the base of your neck, center chest, up to the the nostrils, the you thoracic know, triangle. You know how I remember it. How's that? My three ends, nipple, nipple, nose, nipple, nipple, nose. That's right. If you were to draw a triangle from the nostrils to each nipple, put bullets in that triangle. Generally, if you do that, if you put rounds into that area, people will stop messing with you. They will find something else to do. Sometimes that other thing to do is to fall down on the ground and expire. Um, sometimes it's to turn around and run for their lives, what have you. But that is where bullets need to go. Not in the legs, not in the arms, not in the hands, not in the stomach, not in the whatever. Put the rounds there, and they will start. And they will generally leave you alone. If you put if you put rifle rounds there, they will probably leave everyone alone forever. Do you want to tell them our rule when we go out? Or do you want to just wait till tomorrow for the grad program? Our line of fire. Our designated. Designated shooter and then secondary shooter and then. Can we talk about that now or tomorrow? Oh, we know. can talk about it on Monday if you want. Or, well, yeah, I, say I don't think we have time right now. Today's Thursday, so it's the last grad program or the last public program. I almost said last grad program. It's the last grad program episode ever. Sorry, guys. <laughs> no. And you say to yourself, I just started listening to you guys. Where can I get the links to the show notes? Well, you can go to studentofthegunradio.com, and you can click on that episode. And within that episode, there will be the direct links to all the stories that we reference. The stories are actually in the actual episode. Yeah. So if your buddies at work are like, I don't believe you. I think you made that up. Say, well, here's the source. So argue with the source. How's that sound? Does that sound good for you guys? All right. So we, we would like to give the uh, the pair of brothers from Houston. We gave them the the official filter go team moment nice shot award. And learning curve from this: pay attention to your surroundings at all times. Always be armed. Practice with your guns, and also understand that launching bullets and, and you know when your gun starts making noise, that doesn't cause the bad people to just dissipate. You know, what did Farnham say? What do people do after you shoot them with a handgun? The same thing they were doing before you shot them with a handgun. Uh, so don't don't look for magic and miracles. How come you fired four shots, five shots, seven shots? Well, because... That's when my gun stopped working. Well, <laughs> because it didn't, you know, how, how come you fired six shots? Because it only held six. But no, seriously, folks, we we launched the appropriate amount of bullets until the bad guys stopped doing the bad things. When is that? I don't know. You won't know either. You will have no idea. It's that when we go back to the type 1, type 2, and type 3 bad guys, which I highlighted and, and hit on heavy in the uh, Armed Living DVD. I'm not yeah. going to like be redundant and say it now, but when you get attacked, you don't know which one of those creatures is attacking you, whether it's a type 1, a 2, or a 3. And for those of you that don't have the DVD yet, there is going to be a Christmas sale. So just for that DVD, and it's the last sale we're ever going to do for that DVD. Because okay. we need, uh, I think everybody needs to have it. There's awesome information in there. Yeah, you so. said we need, you know, everyone needs to yeah. have that. If you know somebody that is a first-time gun owner and they've got all these questions, I went to the store and I bought a gun and now I have a gun. Yeah. Well, I was going to say job. We, we need to get that information out to everybody because it's very important. Yes, it is. It is critical. All right, so uh, 
just have it in your mind. I may have to fire more than one shot, more than two, more than three. But I guess if if it takes, you know, if you got a snub nose, then you if fire you can't five. do it, if in you can't three. do it in two or three shots, it probably can't be done. So just yeah. don't even bother. <laughs> so says the genius behind the counter in the gun shop. Okay. All right. It is Thursday. What does that mean? Well, what that means is we've got our student of the gun homeroom brought to you by Cap Arms, www.caparms.com. And we even have a special little theme song for our homeroom. <laughs> What you gonna do when it all comes back to the place that you never wanted it to come back to? And where you gonna roll when the bottom drops out and you got no place to go? Who you gonna trust when trust is a must? You better roll with the rest of us. So pack your bags and all the faith you can, cause it's about ready to hit the fan. So much good music from our patriotic, gun-toting, America-loving rock band, Madison Rising. Check them out. You might, you know, like them. Go to madisonrising.com. Dot com. Dot com. And you can buy their, you can download their albums on iTunes and stuff like that. So, All right. What is your gift to the USA, to the United States of America? And I, if... If you're listening to me in Switzerland or, or New Zealand or Australia, you can. I'll give you a pass. On oh, this you one. still should give a gift to us. <laughs> That's right. You still should, uh, folks. Fifty years ago, five zero. Fifty years ago, we had a president with a D behind his name, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, and when you listen to John Fitzgerald Kennedy talk. He spoke more like a conservative Republican than a Democrat. I can't even fathom a modern Democrat. Democrat. I can't fathom them saying what John Kennedy said. And in just one second, we're going to do the exact quote. You guys know what it is. You've probably a lot of you young people. You've probably heard this because you, uh, you know, listen to clips, audio clips, and you're like, I'm not sure who said that. It was uh, in the the uh, the song by Living Color, and Jared just discovered that the people in Living Color was that you or your brother? No, it was your brother, because it came on the radio, and I said something about Living Color and 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 how they were an all black colored African American band, and he's like, really? Yeah, playing that rock and roll music? Yeah, really, for real. So Jared, go ahead and play this audio clip from President John F. Kennedy, and then we're going to talk about it. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. My fellow citizens of the world, ask not what America will do for you, but what together we can do for the freedom of man. Wow. Yeah. Can you, can any of you out there in the listening audience imagine any Democrat today uttering those words? No. Hardly any Republicans, hardly any supposed conservatives would utter those words. What do we get today? It's the me, 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 I, I, I. What can you give me? You owe me. The politicians, what, who can promise you the most free stuff? Who can promise you the most of your neighbor's money? Mm-hmm. You know, and how about that last part? How many of you have heard the last part? Citizens of the world, ask not what America can do for you. Holy crap on a stick, cracker, crunch, whatever. Crap on a cracker. Can you believe that a president would get up in front of a microphone and say, hey, world, Stop asking what America can give you. Let's talk about what we can do for the freedom of man. Whew. Let's face it. Pretty much every country in the world looks to us and they're like, they stick their hands out. 
America, give us free stuff. Give us aid. It's your job to— While simultaneously hating us. While si- we hate you. Give us money. Indonesia, we're going to go out in the streets and cheer and have parties on 9-11-2001. That never happened. And wear Bin Laden T-shirts like he's a rock star. And then we get hit by a tsunami, and we stand out in the street and put our hands up in the air and say, America, put money in our hands. Really? Help us. Help us, America. I thought we were the great Satan. I thought you hated us. Oh, we only Just hate you convenient. until we need something from you. Yeah. yeah. Well, we, right now the United – go ahead. I was just going to say we have a, a Nicole Kennedy in the audience. Is she related to John? I don't know. Mm. I don't know. They're all related in some form or fashion, right? But I, I – today is Christmas. It's, well, it's not Christmas Day today, but it's New, Christmas Eve. And rather than think about what you're going to get, I want to think about your, what you're going to give – because the United States of America, whether you imagine it as your your Uncle Sam or as the Statue of Liberty or or what have you, is is hurting. We're hurting because for the last two going on three generations of people, those who inhabit the vast majority of those who inhabit this nation have seen the nation uh, as the provider, it's the job of the nation to give me what I want. It's the government's responsibility to fix things that I don't like. Well, I don't like that. The government needs to change it. Not I need to fix things. How many times have you heard people say that? Even people that are supposedly conservatives, supposed conservatives, supposed Republicans, supposed, you know, independents, and how many times you've been sitting around? The government needs to do something about that. They need to pass a law. They need to derp, derp, derp. No, that's not how we fix things. So, what does the United States of America need from you? What does this country need from you? The country needs, first and foremost, for you to understand why it is a United States of America, to have a firm understanding of where we came from. We just hear just because it was a happy accident, it was going to happen anyway. And, you know, some people would have you believe that. Some people would have you believe that the United States of America was just a happy accident, that it was going to happen. Or others, more sinister people like uh, Comrade Barry and his ilk, would have you believe that America is a result of European industrial greed and we built the nation on greed and yada, 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 which is that argument there, that nonsense is so easy to blow out of the water. It's like a a caveman could do it. Say, okay, so as you say, America, all you socialist, leftist, puke-faced college students, Say America was built upon greed and the, the the taking of land from the Native Americans and derp derp derp. Oh, then why for two hundred and forty years have people been risking their lives to get here? Why do people build boats out of out of milk cartons and try and float from Havana to Miami to get here? If this nation is built upon greed and theft and blah 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 blah, why is that? Oh, uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Exactly. No, the nation wasn't built upon that. Has there been greed in America? Oh, yeah. Has there been greed everywhere else in the say, world? There's, there's people that kill millions of people just because to get what they want. Yeah. That's, you know, that's not greed, is it? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> folks, I dare you to find any other nation that offers the opportunity that you have here. Not the outcome, not a promise of a fair and equal outcome. If you want equal outcome, you can go to any socialist nation in the world, any communist nation in the world, and your equal outcome will be everyone lives in poverty. Congratulations. There's your equal outcome. I was going to say, look at the nations that have been overcome by socialism or that have chosen to go that route. Yeah. 
what do they end up in? It's not prosperous like no, the United way. States once was. Yeah, and and they're they're constant like all of Europe. They're playing these weird check kiting schemes now. They're trying to balance this budget and borrow from this person, and this country's going to we're going to lend you money, and then you're going to lend it to us, and that country's going to lend it to us, and the whole European Union is based on a Ponzi scheme. And they're hoping that the bills never come due. Folks, the bills come and due. It is. And we're not going to keep being, we're not going to be able to keep writing checks on an empty account, which is what we've been doing for probably, what, 30 years? What would happen if, if uh, we, as a person, as an individual, wrote a check on an empty account for 30 years? You think that we might end up uh, put away for a little while? Well, you'd be in prison the first time you did it. That's called fraud. Unless you get elected to Congress, then it's just called balancing the budget mm. or extending the uh, – <laughs> we're going to pass a resolution that says we don't have to come up with another budget. We don't actually have to balance the books. We're just going to pass a resolution. Pretty sure that when we founded this nation – Oh, did you know that? <laughs> Speaking of the founding, did you see a thing that's, uh, that that uh, Sally sent us? A CBS sportscaster decided that in addition to being a basketball analyst, he's also a constitutional scholar and that guns are bad. And blah, 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 I don't blah, think blah. I saw that one. Oh, but anyway, this douche nozzle, he went on this Twitter tirade about – you people need to understand that the right to bear arms is not guaranteed by the Constitution. That was put in later as an amendment. Yeah, no kidding. They're a constitutional scholar. Do you know what an amendment is? The, you know what the Bill of Rights is? It's a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, if, you're, if you are a constitutional scholar, you'll know that many states refuse to ratify the Constitution until they were promised a Bill of Rights, which is the first ten amendments. And it was the first ten amendments that went in and corrected the original verbiage so that people would support it, so that the delegates would support the Constitution. Did you know that? Oh, you probably don't know that because you weren't taught in school. You were taught 1776, cross the Delaware, had the revolution, yay, 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 new constitution, everybody, everything's free and we're all great and blah, blah, blah. No. You need to know if, if nothing – forget about ammo and guns and holsters and packs and multicam this and flat dark earth that. All that is nonsense and not one bit of it matters if your mind is still full of garbage if you don't understand why we are here and what the purpose of this nation is. So first and foremost, the gift that you can give to this nation, to the United States of America, is that you can ensure that you, as an individual citizen, understand the founding and why we are here. Make sure that your children, your spouses, your friends, people that are close to you, make sure that they all understand. Uh, Hillsdale College has a thing called Imprimus. Uh, they don't support us. or spo- I mean, not, I don't say they don't support us. They don't sponsor us. We get nothing from them. But uh, I signed up for the Imprimus newsletter. You can go online and do it. They have a fantastic free constitutional class. You can go online and you can watch. You can basically take a an online learning class about the Constitution. If you have kids and you ask your kids about it and they kind of gloss over like, oh, I don't know, make sure that they understand. Yesterday we talked about the mission statement. We talked about freedom, independence, and liberty. The next gift that you can give to the United States of America and that you can also give to yourself is the gift of independence. Well, what do you mean? I can't just give myself independence. Oh, yes, you can. Well, how? Stop mortgaging your life away. Make it your goal in 2016 to reduce your debt. I I would hope that everybody in the audience had already done this. We've talked about this before, but it's been a while. Folks, 
Stop getting credit cards. Oh, do you understand? No, no, listen, listen to me. Stop it. Take stock of your life. What is really important and what is just a gadget and a distraction? If you're using credit cards, if you're, if you're taking out loans to buy distractions, if you can't pay cash for a vacation, don't take it. Oh, that's easy for you to say. No, it's not easy for me to say. It's not. Uh, Ms. Nancy and I started met several years ago on the path of get ridding ourselves of credit card debt. And it was hard because, man, when you're a young married couple, everyone comes out of the woodwork to, to get you to sign up for credit. Every department store, every credit card company, every bank, man, they, it's like, oh, man, you're a young married couple here. You need this credit card. You need this. You need this. You need this. You need this. And when you're young, you think, man, I, I have forever to pay that off. It's easy to think that way. It really is. Until it comes around to Until having to pay it comes off. comes due. Until you realize that you've been paying on the same credit card for years and you're not getting any closer. Folks, we need to get ourselves out of individual debt. you got to do it. Stay away from that temptation because it's, I mean, it's put there on purpose. It's put there to make you... Uh, become indebted, whether it's to the you know to a bank, to a credit card company, to a department store, to whatever. Don't do it. Take stock in your life and say to yourself, "Do I have to have that? Is that important in my life, or is it just a distraction? Is it more gadgets and shiny things?" We cannot have a prosperous nation if the entire nation is in debt. I already know that there are many of your fellow citizens that have checked out, that, that, have, that have willingly put the shiny gilded chains around their own necks for the promise of security and safety. I, already, I know that. I understand that. But if you're listening to me right now, I want you to be different. Liberty. Liberty is something that only comes from individual responsibility. Take responsibility for your life. Take charge of your life. The nation needs it. If we get, and I, I don't know what the, the total is right now, but let me tell you what, that we're at a tipping point. If, when we tip over to greater than 51% of the population of the country has their hand out and are not producing, the producers will never be able to catch up. It's not possible. We won't be able to do it. it just, and think about it. I mean, consider that. We need you. The nation needs you to be strong the nation needs you to make hard choices. It's difficult because we don't want to do that. Humans don't want to make hard choices. We want to make easy choices. We want to be comfortable. We want to be psychologically comfortable. We don't want to have to do the hard things. But you know what? That's what adults do. In, in our cities, our major metropolitan area eras, I'm sorry, metropolitan areas throughout the United States, we have scores and scores of fully grown adult human beings that have the mentality of children. They believe that they're owed. They want comfort and distraction and free stuff, and they don't care where they get it. They have the mentality of children because children don't care about the future. Children, do children care about the future? Do children think about mortgages and, and how are my actions going to affect my family five years from now, two years from now, a week from now? No. Children are children, and they have baser instincts. They, they want what they want now with no consequences. And you, you know, when you're a parent, when you're the adult, you have to say, no, we can't do that. Because I have to make the hard choices. As the adult, I have to make the hard choices. It would be nice to go back to uh, being a kid for a little bit. I, don't, I wouldn't want to stay a kid for a long time because I can do a lot of stuff now that I couldn't do back then. But the 
um, relief of not having to be stressed about the future uh, and, would be awesome. And the, and and it, people are that that desire to not make hard decisions because if you refuse or decide or or you know indicate that you don't want to make the decisions, someone's going to make them for you. You're either a leader or a follower. There's no other option. Yeah, somebody somebody will make, you know, if you can't police your own, somebody's going to police you. If you can't make the decisions for yourself, that's fine. Someone will step in and make the decisions for you. What did we talk about yesterday? Doing what you're not good at. That's doing right. what's hard. Weakness. Addressing your weaknesses, doing what's hard. The nation needs you to have a solid understanding of why we're here, where we came from. The nation needs you as a citizen to step up and be the adult. The United States of America needs you to make the hard choices. And we need you to do that too. That is why we're here. That is what we do in everything we do. We try and equip you. We try and give you the skills and the tools to live a life of freedom, independence, and liberty. But you got to work with us. So when you have your family gatherings and you sit down, think about that. Think, what gift can I give to the United States of America? All right, ladies and gentlemen, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Well, we'll talk to you before the New Year, but Merry Christmas to everybody out there in the Student of the Gun audience. Uh, Facebookers, Twitterers. Instagrammers and follow us on social media. We're going to do a big gift opening on Christmas. We're going to do a big gift opening. We're going to do videos. We're going to do pictures. And yep. for all of you most supremely generous listeners out there, thank you very much. All the students of the gun uh, who, who sent us gifts and, and you know little packages and so forth. We truly appreciate it. And we are going to be posting a, a ton of pictures on social media, gun district, all that. Yeah, we're going to be doing live uh, present opening on Periscope, so find us on there. There you go, Periscope. All right. All right, kids. Remember, you're a beginner once, but you should indeed be a student for life, and Jared's going to give you your homework assignment. Yep, homework assignment. Today is the last day That's of the it. public hour of the week. And, and what? No, I thought you were going to it's the last free grad program day. Oh, no, 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 not yet. It's close. Less than a week away, though. Uh, but it's going to be... Uh, it's not going to be free for much longer, so take advantage of your free trial for the grad program. Go to studentofthegunradio.com. Click on become a member and uh, help us reach our goal. We have a goal and I will tell you, I'm going to tell the grad program tomorrow. Okay. But we have a goal and um, I want you to be able to get in for free. So take advantage of that free trial. 